Well, hello there. Welcome back to the channel. It's always nice to see you again. Are you ready for our next adventure? Well, I hope you find this entertaining. Enjoy. Hi, folks. Welcome back to the channel. Really appreciate you. Thanks for stopping by. Uh, let me start this uh, introduction out by saying I didn't really want to do this video. Uh, I don't like it when people do unfair reviews of products or have negative uh, input about products. But in this case, there was a lot of reviews out there about people complaining about that rear hatch leaking. And from what I determined, this is a quality control issue for Native. And so I thought, well, this video will help them understand what the issues are and what's causing them. And it will also help you resolve your issues and fix them. And, you know, there's going to be multiple ways that you can handle that. I'll go through the way that I handle it. Let's pause the video right here. I want to make something really clear here. I am a huge, huge fan of the Native Kayaks. I think they're some of the best kayaks on the market, hands down. Uh, so this is not a really a criticism of the, the product in general, just in this particular area. And I it think it's easily solved. The next thing is, I didn't get the video of me removing that darn hatch. So uh, if you remove all the eight bolts and use a spatula, um, I was able to extra it from the from the hull relatively easily um, and then I could reuse the product and so you'll see the the removed hatch in the next clip so stick around to the end it'll be a good video enjoy the content now it looks to me like this glue is um, hot melt glue and you can see here in some situations it did spread out um along the the bezel here and i think that probably in that location it would have it would have uh been relatively watertight but in this that one little section there it's not going to be watertight in here like <laughs> this isn't even remotely glued here so water would have poured right through there and certainly here it would have water would have poured through and obviously here there's no glue at all i mean this would be impossible for this to be watertight and this is how it was manufactured from the factory so i think that this gasket here uh is actually probably water uh i don't know if i would say waterproof but certainly water relatively watertight um it's just that the seal all the way around the bezel um was it's just pause okay data this is a quality control issue you need to improve your tolerances for the hole that you cut to install this with you need to use a whole lot more glue and you need to start testing these things before they leave the factory you can't allow a simple thing like this to ruin your reputation please i love you guys please do not let something like this leave your factory again it's not that hard to fix please thank you so I am going to create a, I'm going to get as much of this glue off here as possible. Then I'm going to make a neoprene gasket that goes in here. And then I'm going to add some um, marine um, sealant adhesive in there and bolt it all back in place. And we'll see if it's watertight after that. Okay. Uh, here, let's look at the, the hole pattern on the kayak because that's also interesting. So we can see here that the holes that were drilled aren't even... They're completely missed the plastic. So it wasn't even pulling it down tight either. And I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to do anything about that other than if I rotate it uh, 60 degrees or, or 15 degrees, I could put in a whole new hole pattern, but then the holes that are in there would also um, have a potential leak prospect. So not sure how I'm gonna deal with that. I'll probably just reuse these holes and uh, I think that with these larger nuts uh, on the back, that should probably pull up the plastic tight enough to give me a watertight seal with all the adhesive in there. So that's what I'm gonna do. We'll see what happens. Okay, let's talk about how I resolved this hatch. So when I did reinstall that hatch, I removed all that glue first and the way you remove that glue is in hindsight is you grab it with a pair of pliers and you pull on it and it will stretch and as it stretches snaps away from the plastic uh sticks really really well it's a great glue i think native's on the right track with that that glue but um that's how you can get it off is just by pulling on it with a pair of pliers and it'll snap off um, i did reinstall it using the same hole pattern because 
each one of these bolts actually has a clamp on or a, a large a washer on the bottom of it that clamps the material. So the fact that the holes were a little um, on the edge, it didn't matter. I mean, it's still a really strong system. I, I think Nate is on the right track with that as well. Um, the glue that I used was this uh, 5200 um, 3M Marine Adhesive Sealant. And this stuff is liquid enough that it will fill in any of the, any of the gaps or holes uh, when you apply it. And just use, a, use copious amounts of this material. You, you know, uh, you're not going to be able to keep this, so use as much of it as, as you see fit. But, uh, you know, don't go light on it. The important thing to know is it needs 70 degrees to vulcanize. I did mine in April, and it was a little bit difficult. I had to use a heater to get it to vulcanize. So be aware of that. Um, once I got the thing reinstalled and the glue um, had come to a complete dryness, then uh, I reinstalled the hatch and I poured some water in here and it appeared to be completely watertight. Now, I was out uh, yesterday in the pouring rain and I had a lot of water in the, in the deck area. And um, after I was out fishing, I did, check the, I did check the hull to see how much water was in there. There was about a half a cup of water in there. And, and, uh, that is not a big issue. My big concern was before I, I repaired this, the water would just pour in here. Now, it's a real health hazard when you have a situation like that because here in the Pacific Northwest, I'm fishing all winter long. It, nothing ices up. So I can literally fish every single day of the year uh, if I so choose. And, you know, some of the weather's miserable, but... Um, and so I'm going to be in water that's like 38, 39 degrees, and I'm, of course, wearing a dry suit, but when you get a lot of water over the bow, then, you know, you'll get gallons and gallons of water in the deck. And you need to be able to pull your scuppers to allow that water to leave. Well, if you're getting just as much water in the hull as you are um, on the deck here, then pulling your scuppers isn't going to help. It's just going to fill up with water. So... Um, it's a real serious health concern. If you're, if you're fishing in cold, um, cold weather conditions, you can't have water going into your hull. It's just that simple. It could kill you. So, um, check if you're going to be fishing those kind of conditions, make sure your hatch isn't leaking. Okay, last freeze frame here. So if you're wondering where that water was coming from that was still inside the hull after the uh, after the repair of the hatch, I don't think it had anything to do with the hatch. I believe that the two uh, tubes that hold the steering cables there that go into the, the disc that's on top of the rudder there, that little indentation there fills up with water, and I think you get a couple of drops of leakage around the the uh, the steering cable tubes, and that's where that water's coming from. So hopefully this all helped you guys. It's a relatively easy thing to fix the uh, the hatch. If you can get it off in one piece, it's easy to glue back in, and it is watertight once you get it put back in. So I hope this was helpful. If you know of anybody else who's having hatch uh, leakage issues, please share this video with them, and uh, like and subscribe, as always. I appreciate you guys. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.